Hi, welcome to another episode of African Biographics. Today's episode covers a dark and gruesome period of African history as we look at the rule of King Leopold II from Belgium over the Congo Free State, the territory now known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. King Leopold's rule over the Congo was a horror story with a body count on par with that of Adolf Hitler. The empire known as the Congo Free State was 76 times the size of Belgium. Millions of Congolese were killed or maimed working in rubber plantations and in military expeditions while Leopold amassed a huge personal fortune. In a space of 23 years, it is estimated that more than 10 million Congolese were killed. This video gives an account of what led to these atrocities in the then Congo Free State. Flowing through the heart of Africa, the mighty Congo River winds its way through more than 4,000 kilometers of rainforest. This river, which is a lifeline of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, is a symbol of the lush wealth that can be found within this gigantic and majestic country. The DRC is blessed with massive resources of gold, uranium, copper diamonds, cobalt and coal tan. But with today's story, it was the exploitation of ivory and rubber that first plunged the country and its people into a period of excruciating greed and violence which we are about to look at. The origins of this dark period are rooted in what was the scramble for Africa. Leopold II was the king of Belgians from 1865 to 1909. King Leopold was openly frustrated with inheriting the throne of such a small country and in doing so at a time in history when European kings were rapidly losing power to elected parliaments. So presenting himself as a philanthropist eager to bring the benefits of Christianity, Western civilization and commerce to African natives, Leopold would host an international conference for explorers and geographers at the Royal Palace in Brussels in 1876. Several years later, he hired the explorer Henley Morton Stanley to be his man in Africa. For five years, Stanley traveled up and down the immense waterways of the Congo River Basin, setting up trading posts, building roads, and persuading local chiefs, almost all of them being illiterate, to sign treaties with King Leopold. The treaties, some of which appear to have been subsequently doctored to Leopold's liking, were then put to use by the Belgian monarch. Although Belgium's government felt that colonies could be an extravagance for a small country with no navy or merchant marine, that situation suited Leopold perfectly. King Leopold II persuaded first the United States, then all the major nations of Western Europe to recognize a huge swathe of Central Africa, roughly the same territory as modern-day Democratic Republic of the Congo, as his personal property. He went on to name the territory the Congo Free State. This territory was the world's only private colony and Leopold referred to himself as its proprietor. All of this would give way to the dark period of looting and terror which would begin in 1885. When Leopold took hold of this territory, instead of promoting free trade and civilizing the Congo as promised, he sought rapid exploitation of the Congo. To aid in this rapid exploitation, Leopold gave land to private concession companies who used any coercive means to maximize profits. Initially, Leopold first saw ivory as the main jewel of the Congo since it was in demand and cheap to acquire. Ivory was greatly valued in the days before plastics because it could be carved into a great variety of shapes, jewelry, piano keys, false teeth and more. In the early 1890s, however, a larger source of wealth suddenly loomed. The invention of the inflatable bicycle tire, followed soon by that of the automobile tire, triggered an enormous boom in rubber. Throughout the world's tropics, people would rush to establish rubber plantations. But new rubber trees often require 15 years of growth before they can be tapped. So during that window of time, those who profited were people who owned land where rubber grew wild. No one owned more land like this than King Leopold II himself. For the equatorial rainforest was dotted with wild rubber vines which comprised half of his Congo Free State territory. So given this new development, Leopold established the Force Publique, a military force in the Congo Free State. The Force Publique set up bases and forced labor camps to have the Congolese go and collect wild rubber. The modus operandi of the Force Publique was that they would march into a village and hold the women hostage, forcing the men to scatter into the rainforest and gather a monthly quota of wild rubber. To secure their wives' release, the men would have to disperse into the rainforest to collect the sap of wild rubber vines. As the rubber vines near a village were often drained dry, the men would sometimes have to walk for days to find areas where they could gather their monthly quota of rubber. As the price of rubber rose, so did the quarters. Anyone who resisted or stood in the way of the force public was brutally punished. 
Some of the natives rebelled against this and they made King Leopold II's rule over the Congo with fierce resistance. Unfortunately, this was to no avail. Tens of thousands of others were shot down in failed rebellions against the regime. They would seek refuge in deep in the forest where there was little food and shelter. As a way to suppress the rebellion, one sadistic practice started to be followed by the false public. To prove that they had not wasted bullets, or worse yet, saved them for use in a mutiny, for each bullet expanded, a Congolese soldier of the force public had to present to his white officer with the hand he had cut off of a rebel. If a soldier fired at someone and missed, or used a bullet to shoot game, he then sometimes cut off the hand of a living victim to be able to show it to his officer. In addition to this, the men who failed to meet their quarter even once would face mutilation, with hands and feet being the most popular sites for amputation. If the man could not be caught, or if he needed both hands to work, the force public man would cut the hands off of his wife or children. Photographs and reports of hands chopped off bear testimony to these stories. Here in this picture, we see a man as he contemplates the severed hand and foot of his five-year-old daughter in the year 1904. As a result of the men being forced to collect rubber and the women being taken hostage, necessary crops were not being harvested, leading to massive famines in the region. The system of exploitation that was established by King Leopold became a model for colonial rule in other parts of Central Africa. Many of the surrounding colonies also had rainforests which were rich in wild rubber. The Portuguese controlled northern Angola and the Cameroons were under the Germans and the French Congo, part of French equatorial Africa across the Congo River. Seeing what profits Leopold was reaping from forced labor, officials in these colonies soon adopted exactly the same system, including women hostages and forced male labor. This would result in equally fatal consequences. With time, the reports of death and massive abuse started to filter into Europe and Leopold was forced by the Belgian government to relinquish control of the colony to the civil administration in 1908. The colony would become Belgian Congo until it gained independence in 1960. Leopold, however, made sure that the Belgian government paid him for his prize possession. He would die the following year in 1909. Due to large-scale murder, famine, disease and exhaustion from work, the population of the Congo Free State was halved from 20 million to 10 million during this period. However, there are some historians that argue against this figure due to the absence of reliable censuses and the enormous mortality of diseases such as smallpox or sleeping sickness. Nonetheless, as you can imagine, this enormous death toll completely destabilized the Congo and left the country dependent upon Belgium for food and raw materials. The sad state of affairs would continue in the country as it would still experience different phases of violence, fighting and conflict. Now let's fast forward to June of 2020. Several of King Leopold II's statues were defaced and taken down across Belgium as people there protested his legacy. The statues were a target of activists because of his record of brutal colonial rule in Belgium's former Central African colonies. The current king of Belgium, King Philippe, expressed remorse at the role his ancestor played in the acts of violence and cruelty that took place in the Congo. So now my question to you is this, is the gesture by King Philippe enough to appease the Congo for the role that King Leopold played in the country? Let me know in the comment section below. If you are new here and would like to see more of the content from this channel, don't be shy to subscribe and to click the notifications bell. Also don't forget to like and share the video if you found it useful. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been Tatenda for African Biographics. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.